Hi, this is Yabagai, and welcome to a Katane module tutorial on the subject of Following Orders by Espic, Mario Extern, Noah, and Sean. Following Orders takes place on this 5x5 maze with Egyptian hieroglyphs lined up with the rows and columns of the maze. Your start position is at the intersection of the highlighted inner hieroglyphs, column 2, row 2, or Bravo 2 in this case. You, the end position, as well as the 10 traps in the maze, are randomly determined. You won't know where they are, but if you strike by running into one by accident, as I'm going to do here, watch how the traps flash up, the module gives a strike, and the maze will reset. Like that. And you see all new hieroglyphs in a new starting position. To determine how to safely navigate the maze, you need some help from the module, and it gives it to you by shouting at you. When you flip the switch highlighted here, it will play a series of three to five shouts, at least it usually will. These shouts are up, down, left, and right, and can be done by a man, woman, or child. Listen. Right! Left! Flip the switch back, and they stop shouting. The first shout was right, done by a man. The second shout was left, done by a woman. And the third shout was done by a child. The woman's and the child's shouts are a bit similar, but usually the child, first of all, is a young man, and the woman's shout tends to be a little more drawn out, whereas the kid really gets it out there. Left! And the woman is, says, left. Listen one more time so you can hear the difference for yourself. That's how you tell that subtle but distinct difference apart. The next thing you do is you take these shouts, as well as the information about where you're starting. You're starting at column E, row 3, echo 3, cup row, onk column. These symbols are referenced in this little appendix here. And then you take it to this decoding table over here. For this module, I've actually done this in advance with true conditions highlighted in green and certain tricky rules uh, highlighted in yellow that I just wanted to go over right now. No shouts say a vertical direction. Indeed not. Up and down uh, would be the vertical directions here, so that's true. Um, any voice in between two shouts that share a direction, that is true. No, that's false. I beg your pardon. That is false. You need a sandwich such as left man... It doesn't matter. Left, anything, left something. Any two shouts share a direction with some, a single intervening shout in the middle of that, that is true. We don't have that here. There's two shouts that share a direction, but there's nothing in between it at all. So that is a false rule, I meant to say. Only the child's voice is absent. That means there's a man and a woman, but no child. That's true. That's uh, false, however, because the kid is present here. Turn that red. At least one voice is saying opposite directions. That means you would have a uh, man saying right and the man saying left. That would be literally opposite directions. If the man saying right and the man saying up, that's not opposite. It has to be diametrically opposite. Here we have everyone saying one shot each, so there's no chance for them to contradict each other. That's false. What we get out of this is a row which has the most true conditions and a column that has the most true conditions. This gives us a direction up, and a hieroglyph to stop at. Civ. That circle of the lines here. We make that move. In a straight line, of course, it's only one step in this case. And we're safe. Sometimes you might get lucky, even if you get it wrong. As long as you don't step on a trap, you're okay. But what the module will do is it will give you shouts such that the conditions will path you most optimally. So it is determined that going up to the sieve is the quickest path to the goal from here. Um... That was pretty simple. In case of tiebreakers, first of all, actually, let's go over shortest path to the hieroglyph. That means go, as you'd expect, the shortest path to the hieroglyph. So if you got shortest path to hieroglyph, let's say vulture in this case, you would uh, have a choice of two possibilities. You could either go left to the vulture here or up to the vulture here. In this case, you would go up. If there was a tie for that, um, then you would actually use this table down here. 
to determine which direction to use. That's only in this shortest path to hieroglyph case with this asterisk with the matching asterisk. That's the only time you use this table. Um, if you were on the hieroglyph in question, so if it says shortest path to hieroglyph and then Ankh, well, you can't travel to the Ankh, you're on it in terms of column, so you have to, you only have one way, and it's down to the Ankh over here. If you're on the symbol shortest path, you can't, uh, do it any other way. Erase all that. This module solves in an indefinite number of stages, but again, it will try to get you there as quickly as it can. It's usually between two and four stages. If you're on Twitch Plays, you're queuing for a boss module, be careful, you might want to use labeled queue commands. Let's update the information. Oh, sorry to tease, but before we go any further, ties. If you tie between multiple directions or multiple hieroglyphs, Use your current position on the module to d break the tie. If you're tied between two di directions, say we were on the matching cell, we're on here right now. If we tie from here, we use the corresponding cell in the manual and reference the corresponding either direction or hieroglyph to determine where to go next. So if we're tied on directions, then we would take left, even if it's not involved in the tie previously. Another important point. But if we had, if we had already determined cup had the most true conditions, we keep using cup. We don't. We only break the ties by taking the direction if we have a tie on that, and using the hieroglyph if we have a tie for that. If you've already determined one or the other, don't use this tiebreaker condition for that. And remember, again, I will say it again, if it's it does not have to have been previously involved in the tie for that rule to be tie broken accordingly. Now, uh, now without further ado, I will play the shouts. Left, left, right, left, left, right. And here we go. In the cup row? Nope, it's in the sieve row. Woman's voice is present, true. Man's shout before left, he's shouting before nothing, so that's false. No shout say a vertical direction, indeed not. Um, all shouts saying the same direction, false. Two right shouts, false. No left shouts? No, yeah, there are, that's false. Two or more female shouts, just the one. Vulture column, false, it's the on column. At least one down shout, nope, false. Man's voice not present, no, yeah, it's there, true. Uh, it, it is there, so false rather, no, yeah. In the onk column, true. At least one left shout, true. Child's voice is present, true. At least two, any voice in between two shouts that share a direction, they share a direction, there's nothing in between. That's false. At least three shouts with the same direction, that's two left, so that's false. Man's voice is present, that is false. One second. Man's voice present is true. Child's voice is absent, uh, the child is present, so that is false. There are exactly three shouts, that's true. Not five shouts, then. In the sieve row, true. First and last shouts are different voices. Woman starts, man ends. That is true. At least one voice is saying opposite directions. Uh, well, they're saying one apiece, so that's false. At least one shout of each direction. That's very false. All three voices present, true. And we end up with sieve... Um... Four and whoa, oh, there's a tie between down and right. Three true conditions apiece. So we have sieve as our hieroglyph to go to. In fact, it surely is going to have to be left. But in this case, we need to use our current position on the module. That's this cell here, echo two on the module. So we use echo two on the table. And we take the condition uh, for the direction that we need. That's what I mean by left wasn't involved in the tie. It didn't have any true conditions. But that's the cell we were on, so we use the direction in that cell. We use left because we needed a tiebreaker between directions, and we use sieve because it did not need the tiebreaker. So we go left of the sieve accordingly. All the way here, we're safe. Light is not green. We will reset the shouts. Use the new position. Note down that we are now in the... Ooh, jeez. Sieve row and the sieve column. Start again. Left. Up. Right. Left. Left. Up. Right. Left. 
and stop there. Four shouts. Child, female, child, child. Uh, refresh the table. Let's go again. In the cup row, we are in the sieve row. That's false. Woman's voice present. True. Man's shout was nowhere at all, so we can't proceed to anything. That's false. No shout say a vertical direction. Oh, yeah, there's an up shout. All shouts saying the same direction. That's false. At least two right shouts. False. There's only one. No left shouts. No, yeah, there were. Two or more female shouts. Nope, just the one. Vulture column. False. At least one down shout. Not at all. And those four. Man's voice not present. Indeed not. In the onk column. False. At least one left shout. True. Child's voice present. True. Um, just double checking my work. At least one left shout is true. Child's voice present. True. Any voice in between two shouts that share a direction. Well, these two share a direction, but there's two voices in the middle of that. That's false. At least three shouts with the same direction. That is false. Um, yep. Man's voice is present. False. Um, child's voice is only the child's voice is absent. The child's voice is not, is not absent. There are exactly three shouts. Nope. In the sieve row, yes. First and last shouts are different voices. Nope, it's the kid first and last. At least one voice is saying opposite direction. Yes, the kid is saying right and left. Those are diametrically opposed. So, true. At least one shout of each direction. Nobody said down. All three voices are present. Not the man. At least five. At, are there five shouts? No. Four. Down is the direction. And cloth, which is the little cane, is the hieroglyph we stop at. Down to the cloth. Ooh, boy. From here, diffuser went down to the cloth. There's only one way you can move from that safe spot. Let's go right, huh? Nah, it didn't work. But it was worth a try. Maybe Bravo 5 was our goal. That's why I took that little extra move. Because there couldn't possibly have been a trap. Because we made a safe move, at least backing experts' work here. And this diffuser, I figure, well, there's only one way to go from here. So let's go right. Did that. Didn't solve the module. So... We reset. Bravo 5. Claw throw. And cup call. Refresh the table. Let's go again. Right! Down! Down! Up! Right! Down! Down! Up! And stop there. Let's go through the conditions. In the cup row, nope, we're in the cup column. Woman's voice present, true. Man's shout proceeds, left shout. Man shout before down, man shout before down, false. No shouts that say a vertical direction, very false. We had three of them. All shouts saying the same direction, nope. At least two right shouts, just the one. No left shouts, indeed not. No left shouts at all. Two or more female shouts, just one. Vulture column, false. It's a good cup column. At least one down shout. There are two. Man's voice is not present. No, yeah, there it's there. Man's voice is present. Um, these two are diagonally linked as well, if that helps. In the onk column, that is false. At least one left shout. False. Child's voice present. True. Um, any voice in between two that share a direction? Two downs here. Nope, nothing in between them. That's false. At least three shouts of the same direction. Most you get is two with the downs. Only the child's voice is absent. Child wasn't absent. Exactly three shouts? Nope, and neither five. It was four. In the sieve row? Nope, in the cloth row. First and last shouts were different voices. Yep, man started, child ended. At least one voice is saying opposite directions. Man shouting right and down. Uh, that's not opposite. Female and child only said one each, so that's false. At least one shout of each direction? Not left. All three voices are present? That's true. We have cloth and oops a tie so again we go based on since we're tied on directions we consider our current cell in the module and use that condition so cloth was uh, a winner and then we tie break using the current row of our module row five and in the expert manual it is shortest path to hieroglyph well we're in the cloth row already so to get to the cloth to make a move to cloth we only have one way and that's to the right Let's make that move. And there's your green light. Um, that should be everything gone over, um, except for one more thing. There is a unicorn in this module. 
Once in a blue moon, Microsoft Sam will be the one single shout you will hear, and it will simply be a lovely robotic voice that will simply say, Up. Onk. And if you hear that, that gives you the direction, that gives you the hieroglyph, you get a free move. Congratulations. That is the module following orders. I hope you enjoyed the module. I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions, any comments, any better solving methods, any feedback, any revisions since this video came out, please let me know. Put them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.